Hello and welcome to the second part of Let's Program Geocode series and we're making this bush program on a CNC lathe here. So my name's Mark, I'm from Geocode Tutor and this is the second part of this series. Okay, so what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to do the finish turn. We've done the roughing turn and we've roughed out our part. Now we're going to go in with our finishing tool and finish our sizes here. So like before, we're going to start off our sequence with an N2 number. Now with our rough and turn, we used N1. So this is the second sequence, we use an N2, and I'm also going to be using tool two, so it matches our N number. So we just use this as a search function. Okay, so anything in brackets is an operator's note, it's not read by the machine. So we can put in some tool data here if we want, but I've simply stated finish turn to let the operator know this is a finishing operation. We end all lines with a semicolon. This is our end of block line. So after every line, we put that semicolon in there to signify that it's the end of block. Now a block in G code world is a single line of programming code. So to mix things up a bit, I've added some more details in our safety line so we can see other ways we might write this line of code. So let's go over things step by step. The first G-code I'm using is G54. Now this calls upon our date and position, which we previously set at the front of our part. So any Z movements that cuts material would be a Z minus number. Now I like to set my date and position at the front of the part, just so we can glance through the program. And when we see Z minus, we know we're going to be removing material. So G90 sets our machine to the absolute coordinate system. Our other option here is G91, which would set the machine to the incremental system. So G90 means that all dimensions come from our datum and all movements stem from that zero point. If we use an incremental, it would take the last known position of the tool as zero, and then all dimensions would run from that. For more information on absolute and incremental programming, pop over to my website, link below in the description to see more about that subject. So G97 sets the spindle speed to set our RPMs. Now we will use constant surface cutting speed later in this program, but I do like to set the machine back to a standard at the beginning of each section of code. So G97 tells the machine that when we set our RPMs, this is not going to change depending on our tool diameter. Next up, we have G21. Now G21 sets our metric measuring unit system and G20 would be our imperial. Now, normally we only need to state this once throughout the entire program, but if we're swapping and changing between programs, it would be advisable to add it to the safety line and it's not gonna do any harm by it being there anyway. So sometimes it's a good practice to put that there. Now, if we stop our machine halfway through a drilling sequence, for example, we would need to cancel that drilling sequence, otherwise the machine would get confused. So by adding G80, this cancels any active cycles that may be present in our machine. So it puts the machine into a nice safe state to run this section of code. And finally, here on our safety line this time, I've added G40. So G40 cancels any cutter compensation that may be active within our machine. So if we're coming from our roughing cycle and we have cutter compensation active and we stop that cycle halfway through and we enter into say a drilling sequence or a different sequence where it doesn't use cutter compensation, this on the safety line would ensure that it's canceled before we carry on reading the rest of the program. So that's our safety line programmed. Now, as I stated in the first lesson of this series, that our safety lines may change depending on our needs and the machine. So bear that in mind when you're looking into safety lines. Again, I have an article over on my website that goes into more detail of the sort of things we might add to a safety line. So now it's time to do a tool call. So I've put my finishing turning tool into position two of our machine turret and we're gonna call upon that tool with T2. And the second O2 there is where our offsets are. So it's calling upon any offsets we've added to that tool. Now MO6 is our automated tool change. So by putting MO6 after the T number, our tool turret is gonna to switch around to bring tool two into its position to start cutting. 
Now, because I'm going to use constant surface cutting speeds during this sequence of code, we need to put a spindle speed clamp on our spindle to make sure it doesn't exceed a certain RPM. So G50 does just that. It tells the machine never to exceed 3000 RPM, no matter what happens during the constant surface cutting speed commands. If you've ever been working in a machine shop and you hear a machine speed up to a crazy speed and make a load of noise, that's because the operator forgot to program a G50. So to issue a constant surface cutting speed, we use G96 and the S value sets that speed. Now MO3 turns our spindle on in a clockwise direction. Depends on where your tool is mounted within the machine, you may be using MO4. So with everything set up now, we can start moving our tool around in the 3D environment. So I'm starting off with G00, our rapid travel command, and I'm moving over to X62 millimeters. Now why X62? Well, we're using a stock bar size of 60 millimeters, and this just gives us some clearance. Now we could bring this down so it comes down to nearer the diameter we are going to cut, but we're only saving maybe a second on our cycle time. And by keeping it above bar size, it keeps things nice and safe. We know there's no chance of the tool colliding with our stock bar diameter during this move. I said two millimeters, we'll bring the tool two millimeters from the front face of our part and MO8 turns on the coolant. With our tool wrapped into a start position, I'm now gonna switch over to a feed rate. So we're using G01 so we can add a feed rate to our tool movements. And I'm just feeding slowly to Z0 there. So it's level with the front face of our part. Now, when we roughed off our part, we would have backed off our roughen tool a little bit. So we got some meat there still to clean up as we bring the tool down to just tickle off that front face to give a nice smooth flat finish. So now it's time to start removing material. So I'm coming down to X 0.2 and we're going minus here. So it's just coming past the center line to remove any pips. Now switching back to rapid travel, I'm moving our tool away from the part again. So we're coming up above bar diameter size and we're moving two millimeters off the face of our part. So we're wrapping back away out the way to a nice safe start position before we start turning the profile. And talking about turning the profile, this is where that magic happens. So G70 is our finishing cycle command. So we're telling the machine that we wish to do a finishing pass. So this is just going to follow the profile around our part. Now talking of that profile, we don't need to program that profile again. We've already done it in the rough turn sequence. So we can simply call upon our profile once more by using P100Q200. Now this calls upon that subroutine that we built in our rough and sequence. So we don't need to go over and program the part again. We can just call upon that section of the program. And that is why I used a subroutine during the rough and sequence to save us programming that again. We can just recall it and use it whenever we want in the program. So the P100 tells the machine to look through the program to where it will find N100, the numbers match up, and that's the start position of that subroutine. And Q200 is the final line of that subroutine. Now, once again, we're adding that same line again, we're wrapping into a safe working distance away from our part. And this time I'm coming five millimeters off the face of our part, but it can be any number that you feel safe that's away from the front face of our components that we're programming. So once the finishing sequence is complete, it will wrap it to this position in the 3D environment. With our tool in a safe position, we're now gonna switch over to the machine datum by calling G53. So before we were working from our zero position at the front of our components, by using G53, we're now telling the machine that the zero position is at its tool change position. Now G53 is not always set at the tool change position, it's simply the machine's zero position where most machines just happen to do their tool change. So your G53 may not be your tool change position, but it is certainly the machine zero position. So we can set this in a different position. For example, when setting G53, I like to set my Z to be around minus 200 millimeters. 
I've not done that in this example for clarity, but if we set that Z to minus 200, it will bring our tool turret into the middle of the slide of my particular machine. Now, of course, this will change depending on the size of your machine, but by setting that to Z minus 200, it keeps that turret away from the subspindle. So if I have any long tools that are sticking out and do a tool change, I don't have to worry about a collision with the subspindle. It does that tool change in the middle of the machine rather than one end. So we can set this anywhere we like, but the G53 is the machine zero position, and then we can add dimensions on where we want that turret to be from the machine zero position. So I finished this block of code with MO9 to turn off my coolant, but we could just as easily had it on the line above. At this point, I'm going to turn off my spindle and we do that by issuing an MO5 command. Because we used constant surface cutting speed with G96 earlier in this sequence, I'm now putting the machine back to its default state by selecting its revs per minute rather than its constant surface cutting speed. So I'm using G97 to tell the machine that's the state I wish it to be in. And finally, I end all my sequences with MO1. This is our optional stop command. So we can select optional stop on the machine controls and stop the machine at this point to check our part if required. If we don't require, we simply do not push the optional stop button. So that's what a finishing sequence may look like on a CNC lathe. And we're using a subroutine call there with the G70. So we don't have to rewrite that profile each time. Now, as I mentioned in the previous lesson, we should never assume any code is correct for our machine. So please don't go and type this into your machine expecting it to work. Every machine is set up different, the parameters are different, and there's so many different machine types and different versions of FANUC. This is only a guide to show you how a sequence may be written. So my income is based on teaching people how to program G-code. And this lesson is just a taste of what you can learn over on my website at gcodetutor.com. I have a whole bunch of pre-recorded lessons on programming G-code over on my website, including some CAD CAM lessons and some machine shop maths courses also. And I have an article section full of free information on my website. So if you want to learn more about G-code programming, pop over to gcodetutor.com.